the distribution network is getting less than a quarter of what they're asking for. So mm. when you do that math and you and you think about you think about how fast Silver Eagles are turning them, it's a perfect recipe, uh, especially paired with crazy demand for the premiums to go way way up, right? Welcome to Silver Pros. I'm your host, Silver Dragons, and I'm joined by my awesome co-host. He's very wise, knowledgeable. It's Yankee Stacking. How are you doing, Yankee? What's up, Dragons? Great to be here with you. Awesome. Yes, it's going to be a wonderful night because we are also joined by a special guest, the founder and CEO of Hero Bullion. His name is Jake Haugen. How's it going, Jake? Hey, man, we're doing great. Let's talk about premiums. I'm going to start it pretty basic with you, man. Why do precious metals even have a premium? Why can't we just buy precious metals at spot? Well, the, the short answer to that is I don't think that you are willing to go into the hills and dig it out of the ground. That's that's the number one answer to that. Uh, you know, the silver at spot is is a rare thing uh for for the retail public or stackers and consumers to be able to to find um we have had a number of people ask us about the the elusive silver at spot deals that used to be around in the market and they have disappeared they've obviously disappeared because uh premiums are have gone sky high the reason you can't buy silver at spot is because there's a lot of labor that goes into these silver products to get them in your hands uh, and that that's anything from uh, refining, getting all of the, the slag and impurities out of the silver to uh, physically delivering it on the logistics side, delivering it to a mint, to a production facility. And then the labor that that mint puts into the product needs to, uh, you know, increases mm. the premium over spot. And then, of course, there's other uh, there there there's more transportation as it as it goes further on the supply chain. Uh, whether it be to the wholesaler or to the retailer, and then of course to you. So you know, on the on the on the bulk side, if we get pallets of silver in, we can generally transport silver for about two cents an ounce. Now, if you're buying five cent or five ounces of silver from a retailer, the cost per ounce just to get that to you can can be north of a dollar. Do you think supply and demand though factor in? If the demand for this stuff is going up, is is that maybe a reason why we can't get it at spot too? Yeah, absolutely. De demand is incredibly high right now. Mm. Um, when it comes to when it comes to premiums over spot, uh, you you have to look at the retail public as a uh, a demand aggregator, right, and a liquidity provider for these dealers. And so if a dealer has a, a glut of inventory, let's say, they'd be much more willing uh, because their interest is turning this inventory over at getting it into your hands at a cheaper price. Um, if it, in the instance that we're in right now or the scenario that we're in right now, we're seeing a lot of times we don't know when our next shipment is coming in. So the, the inventory that's there is all that we potentially have to sell for a bit. So here's here's my question. How do you determine yeah. how much of a premium to charge? Because, I mean, mm. obviously you got to buy it from the wholesaler. You get it at one price. How do you determine, okay, this is going to keep the lights on here. This is going to keep our business going. I mean, what's what's the final say there? Yeah, so that's that's a really a, a really good question, and there, there are a lot of layers to it. But if we start with the thought that the market is never wrong, I think that's a really good place to start, okay? So for instance, let's say I have an awesome trader in here who's who's able to secure products at an incredibly cheap price. If we then go to our website and let's say we offered them to the retail public at a price lower than some dealers are getting it for on the wholesale level, they would completely wipe us out, okay? And so what you're gonna find in the bullion industry, this is a incredibly competitive industry People work very hard to get products in your hands um, for the best price possible because you know that a lot of times that is the deciding factor. It's the price, it's the efficiency, uh, the speed with which we can get it in your hands. And so um, if we price ourselves 
you know, too low for the market, what we're going to find is that our competitors do come in and pick us off. I mean, that's, <laughs> it's kind of a known thing. It's if, if you've been in this business long enough, you know, that you've under, you know, that you've underpriced something because one of your competitors, you'll see a name from someone you recognize has come in and bought a bunch of your inventory. Now on the flip side, if you're priced too high, what you're going to do is just be a dust collector. This stuff's going to sit on your shelf. It's not going to go out the door. And so, you know, we all watch each other very, very closely. We, we all know who each other are. We all look at and, and compare ourselves to others. And there's a lot of uh, context that's necessary in bullion. So for instance, some, some dealers may look at live inventory and say, okay, this live inventory, because I have it, no one else does, it's worth more. Um, whereas people selling delayed inventory may be able to sell it cheaper because they know that they're gonna, it's gonna be a, a two, three, four weeks before they can deliver it to somebody. I see. So you guys are watching each other pretty closely, but Absolutely. depending on a lot of factors, it could see. My question is why are the, uh, you know, the online bullion dealers having, you know, different premiums on sometimes the same product? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, like, like I said, a lot of that can depend on uh, if, if we're talking apples to apples, it's a silver Eagle. Right. That is a, um, a live product that we're going to ship. Okay, so right now, I would say that there's a bit of disparity in Silver Eagles. We just sold out of Silver Eagles today. We have more coming in. Um, but um, maybe we were priced a little bit too cheap, and that's why we sold out really fast. Uh, what, what you're going to see is a lot of the pricing is just based on the available information. In other words, the um, I'll give you a perfect example. Authorized purchasers are the distribution network that's been chosen by the United States Mint to issue their bullion silver eagles out and that's a that's a pretty selective group right mm -hmm. so these authorized purchasers are are generally used to every single week getting uh, an allocation of silver eagles we know that through the end of the year and this is this is just based on conversations that i've had with authorized pur purchasers uh they are getting less than half of what they're asking for and they're only getting it every other week Okay, so what that means is essentially the, the distribution network is getting less than a quarter of what they're asking for. So mm -hmm. when you do that math and you and you think about you think about how fast silver eagles are turning them, it's a perfect recipe, uh, especially paired with crazy demand for the premiums to go way, way up. Right. Um, and, and so like right right now, I said today we sold out of silver eagles. Um, we have another batch coming in, but it's, we're, we're going to have a little bit of a gap here. So we're probably going to have to pre-sale, which I think we talked about before. It's not my yeah. favorite thing to do, uh, but it's kind of where we're stuck with right now. So talking about, um, some different options here, what would you say typically has the highest premium that you guys sell and what <laughs> items typically have the lowest premium? Cause I know a lot of people when they're stacking, they just want to buy some low premium silver, low premium gold. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, it, historically, the lowest premium products out there are the, are the products that are issued by private mints. That would be things like a kilo, a kilo silver bar. This is not made by a government, okay? It's not, it's not a sovereign product. It's made by a privately owned mint. And there are a number of those around the United States that make these privately minted uh, bars generally, and you will see rounds uh, made by private mints. You're going to, as, as you move from privately minted bars and rounds to uh, coins, coins are issued by sovereign mints and those mints require a higher premium. Um, it's just, it's just kind of how the market is laid out on, on silver bullion products specifically. Right. Um, right. and then, and that would be things like your, like your, uh, silver Britannias, which I love the silver maples, which you guys know, I love, um, uh, other, other products, silver Eagles, of course, those are all the sovereign products. And now you go, if you want to go a next step up for premium, you want to talk about stuff like, you know, kind of collectible things. This is a two ounce Germania. And when you buy this product, you're buying the packaging, the certification, this one's individual, individually serialized. Um, it's a limited mintage item. So those are going to be the much higher premium products versus something like a 10 ounce bar, let's say, right? And then what about for, uh, for gold? If people want to be stacking gold, what's going to be the lowest and the highest premium there? lowest premium is again it's going to be the bars it's going to be the privately minted bars there are those and those are going to be names like uh credit swiss valcambi valcambi has been incredibly popular because they do uh they offer a good value to people um and 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 
a step up from bars, let's say a one ounce bar or a 10 ounce gold bar. I know that's out of a lot of people's price range, but a one ounce, let's say a one ounce gold bar is going to be at a premium of, let's say $60 where you move up from there to a gold maple. And that's going to be in the neighborhood of $80 and a gold Eagle is going to be in the neighborhood of a hundred dollars over spot. Right. And so you can kind of follow that up the ladder. Now, uh, I know you guys have have produced quite a bit of content on on fractional gold. So another mm -hmm. kind of rule of thumb is as the piece gets smaller, the premium goes up, right? Mm -hmm. um, yep. And and that's just a, that's just a function of the fact that they don't save a whole lot of money by stamping a tenth ounce gold coin versus a one ounce gold coin. They still have to put they still have to make a coin. They have to make an edge. They have to make a die. They have to go through mm -hmm. all of those processes. And that cost is distributed over a smaller piece of gold. That's why you see the higher premiums. I got to ask you, when have you seen the premiums, you know, at their all time high and at their all time low? Mm, yeah. Premiums get too low on this stuff. It just gets melted down and, and made into something else. Whether I don't know whether it's used for industrial purposes or made into bars and rounds. Again, something newer, something fresher that's going to sell. Um, there, ha there have been a, some periods of, of really low premiums, um, you know, during, uh, I would say 2016, 2017 premiums were very, very aggressive. Uh, I think back in 2016, 2017, the U S mint would issue their silver Eagles to their authorized purchasers for $2. The authorized purchasers responsibility is to get that silver from the U S mint to their facility, the authorized purchasers facility and um, you have to figure that that's going to cost them two, maybe three cents an ounce. So let's say the authorized purchaser is in a silver Eagle at $2 and three cents. I've bought silver Eagles for $2 and eight cents before. So that's an incredibly tight spread. Wow. Uh, I wish we were there again, <laughs> but that's probably about the cheapest you're going to see, uh, silver Eagles. Now the highest, the highest, I mean, we, we had wholesale as the type ones this year, the type one silver Eagles this year, we're trading, uh, north of eleven dollars wholesale, um, and that and that was before the Type Twos came out. So you saw Type mm -hmm. Twos on presale for a little bit cheaper, but live Silver Eagles, you know, north of ten, eleven dollars. I mean, that's that's about as historic as I've seen. Um, but the demand is there. Some people are super committed to Silver Eagles. So my question is, where do you see premiums going from here? I mean, you said they've been very high recently. Uh, do you think they're going to keep going up? Do you think they're going to stabilize? And then also, um, is there a certain season where the premiums would be lower, like the spring or summer, or does none of that matter? It's just based on supply and demand. Oh, well, good yeah. question. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. There's a couple layers to that question. And so where, where I'd like to start is the fundamental Thing. If there's one piece of advice that I could give you to um, to help you understand what's going to happen or be able to predict in a way what's going to happen with premium is everything in this industry on the silver side keys off of Silver Eagle. If you mm. see Silver Eagle premium starting to go up, you know that everything is going to follow. And so your window of opportunity is kind of uh, is kind of slim and it's getting slimmer as the information turns faster within our market, that that window from, hey, uh, Silver Eagles, uh, let's say Silver Eagles in the last two weeks, they, I think they've gone up uh, $2 in premium, right? Um, as soon as you see Silver Eagles, you know, at a few different sites, you see those premiums coming up, it's time to move if you're thinking about buying, right? Because you know, shortly after that, the constitutional silver there, Yankee, the premium on that is going to go mm. up. The silver maple premiums are going to go up. The five mm -hmm. and ten ounce bars on one ounce and one ounce rounds, those are all going to go up and and potentially go away. They're all going to be absorbed by the market. And so uh, we talked about it last time, SD. What's going on with premiums? I said back then, I think it was you know, I think it was about six weeks ago we were on. Um, I said premiums are going to come higher, and you know what? They they're here. Higher yep. premiums are here. Where yep. I see them going, the only thing that's going to really provide relief. And again, we're going to talk Silver Eagles because that's what the, the market keys off of um, is how many people are willing to buy the pre-sale uh, 2022 Silver Eagles. We are not selling the 2022 Silver Eagles yet. I still think it's too far out. I'm not comfortable um, with, with selling them as far out as some others are. We will probably start selling them right around uh, Thanksgiving, uh, probably the week of Thanksgiving. Um, but if some of the pressure that the, that demand that's built up in the market 
gets absorbed by the pre-sale of the type two silver eagles i think that would provide a little bit of relief but you're still going to have this underlying underlying uh current that live silver eagles are going to be few and far between simply because the authorized purchasers are not getting what they're asking for um and you know the the authorized purchasers these are these are a lot of rock solid phenomenally run companies and uh you know they have a lot of smart people working there so if if they can't find silver eagles if they can't source silver eagles from each other and obviously they're they're not getting as many as they need from the US mint they have no other choice than to raise the premium because they don't know what's coming behind it and what else they're going to sell they know that silver maples are going to be selling shortly after that so Again, the one piece of advice, watch Silver Eagle premiums. Uh, it's not going to be alleviated on live product before the end of the year. We're, it's going to be before the end of January before um, we see premiums relax a bit. And it would probably go into February because, you know, demand is already being sold forward. Now, when is the best time for lowest premiums to buy Silver Eagles? I would say mm -hmm. historically, summer is when the doldrums are here. Now, are we living in standard times <laughs> no. are we living in normal <laughs> time <laughs> throw that all out the window it does not matter right now uh but in my experience uh june and july are generally slow just because there's that whole competition for time people are taking vacations uh they're they're spending more time outdoors they're they're not cooped up you know in front of a computer buying bullion you know at some online retailer or you know maybe they're not going to their local coin shop uh, to buy. And so that's generally the best time. But like I said, throw that all out the window until some of this settles. I mean, we have more inflation news, guys. We talked about inflation last time. It's yeah. even worse than last yeah. time. And I told you inflation is going to drive new buyers into this market. And that's exactly yeah. what's happening. I talked to a lot of uh, new people that want to buy bullion. Mm. And they're very concerned about inflation. They're concerned about, you know, people are starting to get nervous about like food security, things that we as Americans are not used to having to confront. Uh, people are very concerned about it. So Jake, do you think that that widespread spot deals that we loved years ago are ever coming back? Yes, I, I'm a firm believer. <laughs> yes. I, I believe, <laughs> I, I, I think we'll get there. I, okay. I, I, guys, I don't know when that's going to be. Um, I, I hope that we're one of the first that are able to offer that. Mm. Um, it, it's just, uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel like if it's, even if it's limited to five ounces, you know, uh, it's something, it's something, it's a way for, for dealers to give back and, mm. um, to, to show, Hey, I mean, what, what all these, what all these dealers, when they offer this, the spot price deals, they're trying to show um that they can deliver for you they're trying to show that that you can trust them find silver at a great price getting it in your hands it's an emotional thing it's it's it creates that little that little connection and i you know i love it i love silver um and i want to i mean that's my goal here i'm trying to help as many people as we can uh get silver in their hands protect themselves i'm a big believer in it and the times that we've talked about you know we've been talking for decades about it a bullion as a hedge against inflation, right? I mean, we've we've heard it over and over and over again. And like, now is the time for silver to prove itself. Now is the time for gold to prove itself, guys. Um, and so it's an exciting time, even though there's a lot of terrible things going on uh, right. in the in the world. Uh, it's an exciting time uh, for a lot of stackers to to kind of be validated. Like, look, you know, the fundamentals have not changed. We're printing more and more money. You can't make more constitutional silver. It's hard to get silver out of the ground, guys. Um, so this is this is some interesting times. Don't fall asleep right now. You know, that was awesome having you on, Jake. Uh, we really appreciate the time. And uh, we'll see you all next time <laughs> on Silver Pros. Stack like a pro.